Okay, first I have to think how I'm going to intro this. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm wrong on this issue, but that's probably a pretty good start. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> I get the straight face. <laughs> Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Talk. The, in this video, I want to actually have a debate with my two friends, Matt, the lumberjack landlord, and Michael Zuber from One Rental at a Time. We are three investors who reached financial freedom, and our, Matt and I are both coming up quickly on leaving the W-2 and joining Mike's world of wondering how we ever had enough time to work, probably. <laughs> but in this video, I want to debate something that came up on Michael Zuber's live stream. So if you're an investor, I suggest checking out one rental at a time every day of the week, 7.30 in the morning, except for Thursdays, it's at 7. Mike wakes up at like 4 in the morning or maybe 4.30, reads through a whole bunch of information that would probably put me back to sleep, but picks out <laughs> like cherry picks the things that matter to an investor and then does like a 10 to 15 minute update that literally tells me what's going on that actually matters to me as an investor. And in one of his live streams, he mentioned the subject of student loan forgiveness. So this is not a political channel and I am not going to say I agree with one side or the other. I am going to play devil's advocate and talk about the positives that could come and the reasons why the logical argument for why there should be student loan forgiveness. And then we'll have a debate. I'm not saying this is my opinion. Don't sue me, bro. Don't hit unsubscribe because you think I'm on one side or the other. On YouTube, the, the rule is you have to be in as much in the middle as possible on your channel or they can basically stop showing it. I just want to have an actual debate and see how you, the viewer, feels at the end of this. Think about how you feel now, whether we should have student loan forgiveness, how it should be structured, or if we shouldn't have it at all. Let us have this debate. And then at the end of the video, leave a comment and, and let us know if we in any way shifted you one side or the other. Let's start with Matt, because I think this is going to be the strongest argument <laughs> and probably the right one. I don't know, Matt. Your opinions on student lo loan forgiveness? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, video's done. All right. <laughs> Here's re it's really simple. It's the same thing that changing to a, uh, a health system like Canada. It's the same thing that going from a, you know, really kind of public center non -for on, and non-for-profits converting over to the same type of system as Canada has. That is years and years and years and years and years in the making. It's really difficult to make a systemic change like that. The thing that I don't like about the student loan forgiveness program is there were plenty of people that sacrificed plenty that aren't going to get that loan forgiven. They've already made all the sacrifices. They've already worked the 16 hour days. They've already worked the weekends. They've already sacrificed time with their family. So I don't think it's, I, I always look at any decision and say, is it fair? And I don't think that's fair. Now life's not fair sometimes. But in my eyes, I think that that would be an unjust thing to do because it is absolutely 1000% going to create more inflation. Mm. And that will put an even heavier burden on the people that already work 16 hours a day, already sacrifice time with their families. And I think the other thing too is, is that really student loans really started to get really bad when the government got involved. Oh, no question. When they got involved, because what I see for the kids, we do a lot of student housing. And what I see for those kids is they are signing up for at least a hundred thousand bucks worth of debt getting out of high school. Because why wouldn't you make that a kid's decision? Like, hey, you're 18. Here, a hundred grand. Don't worry. You can pay me back over 25 years. And I think the real challenge is, is that more than ever before, you can make a great living and a great name for yourself in a trade. And I think that the overall end solution isn't college for everybody. There's people that should never be driving a truck that should only be in a classroom. And that's more catered to what they would experience in college. There's folks that right away, 18, man, they should be getting a CDL because they're going to crush it. Like I am so much further ahead of any of my friends that graduated high school. It's not even close. It's eons past. And it's what you do with the time. So I am absolutely against it because I think it creates an unfair advantage for some. I think the second piece, like I said, I think is that it penalizes others who did the right thing and paid. 
And I think third, because the government needs to stop interfering and making messes of things. And four, if that's three is not enough. I think Mm -hmm. the fourth one really is if we brought it back to the way that it was 30, 40 years ago, I talked to people. Tuition was 2000 bucks 30 years ago to go to college, 2000 bucks for, for, for a semester. And now it's 35, 50, $75,000. And what are these people doing getting out of school? I know so many tenants now that are burdened with this debt that even if you give them 10,000 forgiveness, forget about it. At the end of the day, it's a systemic issue and it's a systemic problem that needs to be fixed. I think that way. Okay, Matt, I I appreciate you making all the points that I'm going to come up with. Mike? I guess I look at this problem kind of, I don't know, differently. Uh, You know, again, Matt, ninth ninth grade dropout, didn't have to make these choices, right? First off, I got married uh, as a teenager. Uh, I went to junior college, then a four-year degree, and got a master's degree in MBA. I took on lots of student debt, personally. I chose to work seven days a week for almost three full years. My second job only went to student debt. All the income for my second job went to whack student debt because it was expensive. It was tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, I think it was, I think it started over 50 grand because of course, once you go back and get a master's degree, the four-year degree money stops, right? And you just add more debt because that's what you do. And oh, by the way, I went to a I went to a junior college the first two years which was like four bucks a unit or eight bucks a unit. So again, I went through six years of college. I only got student debt for four years and it took forever. And then one of the things, uh, again, that I wanted to do different was for my kid. And when a big deal, a big goal of mine was always to have her to get any college degree she wanted and uh, for her to leave school with no debt because it was a burden. Lo and behold, my daughter decides to get a degree that cost almost $200,000 we wrote that check. We wrote four different checks or eight checks or however we paid for it. She left with no debt. So to hear people throw this around like it's candy is annoying. Now, if there's fraud involved, that's a different problem, right? If you went to a university that was fraud in, in, or a school or whatever, those, those are different discussions. I'm talking to the people that were adults that signed on the dotted line who maybe didn't finish their choice, who maybe decided to go to school for 10 years and get four degrees, their choice, you know, that, that's hurtful. And then, oh, by the way, I grew up with nothing. I am the only college graduate in my entire family. I'm talking cousins, all of this stuff. Most of them had to go to trades because they didn't have another option. So now what we're doing is I don't know what the percentages are, but I'm going to guess Student loan forgiveness helps what? 12, 15, 20% of our population, but we're asking the other 80 to pick up the block, pick up the water. That is terrible. And then, oh, by the way, uh, Matt brought this up, but it deserves hitting again. You cancel this. It is freaking inflationary. Have we not learned that stimulus is inflationary? We got this guy talking about gas stimulus now, like it's going to help gas go down. Are you nuts? So again, more stimulus. And then fine. I believe any talk of student loan forgiveness without fixing the root problem is idiotic and stupid. Mm -hmm. I will not contemplate a dollar of student loan forgiveness until you fix the underlying problem. The student loan problem, the fact that debt is up and schools are making gobs of money and you have all these tenured professors making all of this stuff on the back of our kids is not okay. Fix the system. And then if you want to go back, you know what? In all honesty, if we fix the underlying system so this can't happen again, I don't give a rat's ass if it's 10 or 50 50 grand forgiveness. Fix the system. I do not want to debate this again. If it was broken for 15 years or 20 years or whatever it is, fix it. I don't want to talk about this again. And then finally, back to it again. When are we going to have people held accountable? You signed on the dotted line. What the heck? So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm pretty heated. Uh, I worked my job for three years on purpose because I wanted to pay it off. I took ownership of that. And then as a young parent, young parent, I identified college education for my daughter, whatever she wanted. And we wrote those checks. 
It wasn't, believe me, I didn't, I was, believe me, I'm 20 some odd years old. I'm not thinking my daughter's getting a $200,000 education. That was not money that was put away, right. but we figured out a way. So I don't know. I, this is, this is a touchy subject for me. It is a touchy subject. I can tell that's, and I heard it in your voice on your live stream on your update when I was like, Oh, that's something we should talk about because yeah. it's touchy. So I can poke the button. Yeah, I can poke it. Push, push, push. So, so I took a note here of, you know, it's, it's inflationary. That's a, that's a valid point. Um, and then I took a note that Matt made, Matt made most of my points. My actual first thing I wanted to bring up is we need to fix the issue that, that forgiveness is a bandaid like that. I agree with that. So, so on that, we agree, Matt, you made a really good point of if, if we, ha we have a, an, a system that's running a certain way, and then we wanted to switch our healthcare to like Canada's, or, or we want to make that big systemic change. It's, it's, that's just not going to work. Yeah. Kind of like gas to solar power. It's gone pretty well. Right. Or yeah. And the, so there's a whole nother topic on, right. You can't run your AC because we don't have any power for the power grid, but you need to charge your car at night because we don't want to use the, yeah. Just the gas. So here's, here's some ideas. You would think I'm on the, I, the side. I have a couple of boxes that I check off on. I should not want student loan forgiveness. I joined the Marine Corps, right? I, I could go to college with the GI bill. Mm -hmm. So if I had to put my life on the line, sign the thing saying, I'll go to another country and kill people or die to get college benefits. I wouldn't want somebody else to be able to sign a thing saying they're going to pay for it and then get it forgiven. Mm -hmm. So I've never had a penny in student loan debt. So you think I'm on that side. Then my son went to college, graduated with a degree. Um, and my, my graduation present was putting him through our CDL school so he can actually get a job and pay off his debt, <laughs> which he did. <laughs> he graduated with $54,000 or so in debt. I helped him with some, not a lot, but some. And he, him, he paid it off and he's saving for his first duplex now. So you think he got debt, he paid it off. I would also be on the side of, I don't want student loan forgiveness because it's not fair to the people who got the debt and then paid it off. You would think, but we need to fix the issue. And here's why I think student loan forgiveness in this argument as a devil's advocate, why I'm expressing the opinion where I think we should have the, the student loan forgiveness is because it's the only debt that can't be gotten rid of with a um, help bankruptcy. Me bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. Thank you. Sorry, my brain shut off. Right. It's, it's a form of indentured servitude. You can't forgive this debt. It's the only thing that's left of a type of actual slavery. And so I, th I think that since it's being presented as if you work 10 years as a teacher in public service, or they have a couple of different categories, you can get that forgiven, but 98% of the time it wasn't forgiven. So that goes to Mike's point of if there's fraud, I support it. You were told if you do these things, it'll get forgiven, but 98% of the time it wasn't. That's a fraudulent system where you're getting wrong information for what you're committing to. So it, there should be forgiveness for that. Second, if you want somebody indoctrinated, and I'm definitely not going to attack religion, but if you want somebody to be Muslim or Christian or American native or spiritual or whatever, you talk to them when they're five. Before we have the roadmap of how the world works, we say, here's the religion our family believes in. Magically, you were born in the place where it's the right one, right? You start young, you end up with religious people. From kindergarten, teachers who their source of income can't, can't came from education are telling children the only way to success for the next 13 years is to attend school with the goal of going to college. This is a story about my daughter who was in high school and we were in the, what do they call the, the room with all of the career choices. Mm -hmm. Job there fair. were 64 banners for colleges on the walls and nothing for welding, HVAC, CDL or anything. And I was talking to the principal and I said, why are there all these colleges on the wall? What about the trade schools? And he explained, in order for our high school to continue to get funding, we are judged based on how many students apply, not go to, but apply to college. So funding for, for the you know, K through 12 comes from students applying to go to college. So the teachers have to, the schools have to present, this is your best option because then only 15% of graduates continue on to a four-year degree with everyone being told it's the only option. Imagine how much that would drop if people are actually told at that age how viable a CDL or an HVAC or a welding cert can be. Mm -hmm. So he looked at me and he goes, well, your daughter's attending this school. Don't you want her to go to college? And she was a junior. She still had a year to go. So I'm super proud of her. 
but she might have kept her mouth shut. She goes, no, I'm not going to college. I'm going to get a CDL from my dad's school and make more money than you do. To the principal that she still had to be at another year, right? So we are indoctrinating children from kindergarten that you need to go to college. And then we're signing them up for debt that can't be forgiven. We're telling them there are ways to get it forgiven by working these jobs and then not doing that. Mm -hmm. 40 40% of people with student loan debt did not get a degree. So it's not like you got a degree. You were the, the, the high schools failed that person, didn't prepare them for college correctly so that they would actually finish. So 40% of the people that we're talking about getting student loan forgiveness from aren't benefiting from the degree in the first place. And then Mikey made a good point. If they took two or three different degrees that don't equate to more money, those were all choices. I see it. But the problem is the system. I think if we could fix the system, we should do student loan forgiveness because one time is is a Band-Aid. So that's the first point. I'm going to share two images and then I'm going to give you you both a chance to rebut what my points and whether you agree or disagree. The first thing I want to talk about, and I'm not going to actually talk about it, is the three of us do not have skin pigment, pigment to be able to talk about this subject. But this, this image, average individual federal student loan debt is highest for borrowers of a certain color. Mm -hmm. When we talk about systems to help the people who are economically disenfranchised, student loan forgiveness would have a greater impact in certain segments of society. So I'm not going to talk about that because, like I said, the three of us don't have the pigment to even be involved in that. Mm -hmm. But it's something to think of. And then the last thing I want to talk about is, and, and, and you guys could probably both do this too. When it comes to bailouts, we're talking about, we want to stimulate the economy, which yes, is going to create inflation. But if we're seeing a massive crash in transactions in real estate, that goes through lenders, it goes through agents, it goes through contractors, it goes through handyman, it goes through all of the things, the permits and everything where the transactions die, economy is going to slow down. We're, we're seeing that now. So we want to stimulate the economy, but you're right. Handouts equal inflation. When you ask somebody, how many times do you think the government has bailed out a big corporation or a bank? They will name the big ones. They'll say cars, banks, and things like that. When in reality, we're talking about a segment of society who 40% didn't get the degree. We're talking about economically disenfranchised segments of society. And we're talking about people who were lied to about how to get it forgiven by working in certain fields. Like all these reasons why it is basically a fraudulent system. Most people don't realize how many bailouts, because I'm just going to go to how many bailouts. And yes, you're going to see banks and lenders, right? But I'm just going to scroll for a minute. We're talking about one segment of society None of us care that all of these people have been benefiting from all of the bailouts that have happened over the years. And we're talking, these are 80 million, 80 million, 78 million. These aren't small bailouts. So all of this adds up to a lot of bailouts over the years. And that list continues to think, yes, I'm not going to benefit from student loans being forgiven personally by having debt forgiven, but I am going to get to live in a society where more transactions happen. Student loan debt payments can turn into housing payments, rent payments, rents that go up that benefit investors. So I'm not falling on either side of the fence. This was me playing devil's advocate. I'm going to give you guys a chance to come back now. Matt, has anything I've said at least made you think about student loan forgiveness? No. No, good. That's what I figured. Yeah, because I mean, again, at the end of the day, those companies were bailed out in a lot of cases, like if it was 08 and 09, they, you know, the government received warrants in those companies, you know, stock transaction where they actually had something they could then sell. And again, from my, from my, truly from my perspective, I think that quite frankly, those companies shouldn't have been bailed out. If you run an unsound company, then this is, it's, it's not capitalism where you choose it's capitalism period. Mm -hmm. So if that means a bank has to fail, like I get the moral hazard, you know, and I get understanding what happened in 08 was a little bit different. But these other companies kind of one off, plenty of companies go bankrupt, plenty, plenty of companies don't get bailed out. And so, yeah, I think at the end of the day, personal accountability is the biggest challenge we have as a society. And I think that 
when I sign on anything, if it costs me more, it's tough. I signed where it goes. I should have, I could have done more. Maybe I, again, I'm with you. If it's fraud, yeah, it should be forgiven because those companies structured themselves in a way to make sure that the person could, you know, couldn't get away and that they weren't providing any value. I absolutely, in fact, I'll take it a step further. The people that set up those things should be in jail because that's not the right thing to do. And if you haven't seen any of the videos on my channel or Mike's in the last 24 hours, I'm all about the right thing to do. So in my eyes, I think forgive one, you forgive all. And I think that at the end of the day, we have, we need to have accountability as individuals to what we agree and commit to, whether it helps us or it hurts us, we have to follow through. And that's, that's, you know, that's growth. And Mike, anything that I say, did it make you think a little well, deeper about it? Well, there's one thing that I agreed with before that I just want to reiterate that you brought up. And again, I talked about, you got to fix, I'm not going to, yes. I'm not talking about just forgiving anything until we fix the underlying system. The number one thing that must be added immediately is the ability to wash away student debt in bankruptcy. That's why it exists. Bankruptcy, like we have chapter 11, Revlon, $3 billion retail company is going to go bankrupt, restructure its debt and come out stronger. Mm -hmm. Bankruptcy is a part of capitalism. When stuff gets wonky, life happens, you should be able to go bankrupt. It's not fun. Mm -mm. It's, not, it's, it's not fun for anyone, but at, at the end of it, you get another chance. Mm -hmm. The fact that student debt can't be washed away except in extreme circumstances is unacceptable. The, you must change the, the only reason student debt is so cheap is because you can't wash it away. Correct. If you could wash away, I guarantee you this much, and it needs to happen tomorrow. If you suddenly you know, had an executive order from the president of the United States that says, you know what, you can now wash away student debt, all student debt, including federal debt in bankruptcy. You would not be able to borrow money at 3% because an 18 year old kid mm -hmm. should not be able to sign up for a college education that will take four years that 40% of them never get. Mm -hmm. That is bad debt. That mm -hmm. debt would cost 15, 18, 20%. You could get it, but you're going to really want it. And suddenly those trade schools are going to look a lot sexier. So if you want to go get a PhD or become a doctor or a lawyer and you're up for 15 points, go nuts. Lots of us are going to trade school. And oh, by the way, you want to know something else that happens? Cost of debt goes up. College tuition gets cheaper. Supply and demand, baby. That's right. Freaking A. Change the program. Make debt. Pay. If you sign a President Biden, who's the current president, signed an executive order tomorrow that said you can now go bankrupt or whatever, wash away, whatever the right it's vocabulary true. is, it's I would actually consider student debt forgiveness, wash away the craziness of the last two years, rain money on dough. Fine. Let's just move on. But if you are not fixing the freaking system, I don't want to talk about it at all. Yeah. I actually think I know some people who have student loan debt and if it was forgiven, they would go rack up some more. <laughs> like that, that's the way I think some people see it. And, and, and the last thing, and the only political thing I'll say is a, when a politician talks about student loan forgiveness, it's to buy votes. Yeah. And I don't see the fix coming. No. Cool. So if we have less controversial topics and people want to reach out with questions, Matt, how can they get a hold of you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram. And you can check me out Sundays on my live stream, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. And Mike, if they want to reach out, how can they find you? One rental at a time. And I do my live streams 8 a.m. on Saturday. Thank you both. Until my next video, thanks for coming to my Dion Talk. Sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Yeah. All right. So, and I'll probably take this out of the video because this is too much of an overshare. But not today. But I only date people in open relationships. You can do that if you start from there, but you can't be in a relationship and then make it open. You can't have that systemic 100%. change later, right? That's right. Definitely I really like you, but I'm also going to start seeing Jane. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs>